Starship Flight 8 has faced back-to-back -back challenges. A last-minute pressure deficiency forced a launch scrub just 40 seconds before liftoff, followed by a broken alignment plate and a chopstick arm malfunction. But in true SpaceX fashion, teams moved lightning fast, fixing every issue and ready for the next attempt. Will it finally succeed? Let's find out. After weeks of extensive preparations and testing, SpaceX attempted to launch Starship Flight 8 from its Starbase facility in Texas on March 3. The mission, featuring Starship 34 and Super Heavy Booster 15, aimed to achieve several key objectives, including a Raptor engine relight test, the deployment of dummy Starlink satellites, testing new heat shield technology, and verifying the Block 2 design of Starship. A propellant loading phase commenced as planned on launch day. However, during this process, telemetry data indicated irregularities in the booster's propellant delivery system. And if some comms did just go out, we heard that an operator hold got in, so they are troubleshooting one issue as we continue to move through prop load. We'll get some more details on what caused the hold. Though specifics were not immediately disclosed, SpaceX teams, known for their rapid problem solving, worked to address these anomalies by adjusting flow rates, allowing the countdown to proceed toward the final minutes. Yet, as the countdown reached T-40 seconds, a new and insurmountable issue surfaced, prompting SpaceX to call a hold. All right, and it sounds like we cleared the issue on the booster. We're now holding for a late-breaking issue with ship, so they're talking through that right now. Engineers determined the problem was too significant to resolve within the launch window, leading to a complete scrub of the launch attempt. The reason for the scrub was later revealed to be a 20-bar deficiency in ground spin-start pressure. In liquid-fueled rocket engines like the Raptor, turbo pumps are used to pressurize and deliver propellants into the main combustion chamber. To initiate this process, the turbo pumps must first be spun up to operating speed, typically using high-pressure gas, such as helium or nitrogen, supplied by a ground-based system. This initial phase, known as the spin start, ensures the pumps reach sufficient speed to begin drying in propellants. Once spinning, the pre-burner takes over, providing sustained power to the turbo pumps for continuous operation. The ground spin start pressure must meet a precise threshold to ensure a successful transition to pre-burner driven operation. Being 20 bar low means the pressure was insufficient to achieve the necessary pump RPMs, potentially preventing the engines from igniting reliably or at all. Following the scrub, SpaceX teams moved quickly to de-stack the rocket, allowing them to thoroughly inspect both stages and address the spin start pressure deficiency. Once the ship was removed from the booster, engineers conducted a thorough inspection of the propellant lines, pressure regulation systems, and ground support equipment to identify potential causes of the anomaly. They likely checked for leaks or blockages in the helium supply lines, inconsistencies in pressure sensors, or thermal contraction effects that could have affected pressure readings. Initially, SpaceX targeted March 5th for the next launch attempt, expecting a quick resolution. However, diagnosing and addressing the issue took longer than anticipated, forcing a delay to March 6th. By early Wednesday morning, the problem was resolved through necessary hardware adjustments. With the problem resolved, SpaceX began restacking the rocket on Wednesday morning, aiming to ready the vehicle for the March 6th attempt. However, during the restacking process, an unexpected complication arose. A piece of the hot stage ring clamp was observed breaking off, forcing SpaceX to halt the operation immediately. Later, the detached component was identified as an alignment plate, a guide that helps position the ship correctly over the clamps during stacking. Fortunately, the actual clamping mechanism remained intact and undamaged. The hot stage ring, a critical component that facilitates separation between the booster and ship during flight, relies on clamps to secure it in place. Any damage to these clamps could compromise the structural integrity of the ring, increasing the risk of a failed or irregular stage separation. Given its crucial role, SpaceX determined to de-stack the vehicle to assess the extent of the damage and make necessary repairs before proceeding with the launch preparations. After the D-stack, teams climbed the launch tower to assess the clamp failure and inspect the hot stage ring for structural integrity. They also spent time inspecting the aft section of the ship, specifically the areas where the hot stage ring clamps attach, to check for potential damage. In addition to this issue, another problem was identified with the chopstick arm carriage system. One of the skates, which allows the carriage to move smoothly up and down along the launch tower, derailed during the stacking process. This likely caused a loss of precise control over the arm's movement, leading to the ship making unintended contact with the clamps and contributing to the damage. SpaceX teams were seen working on the carriage and skates as well, making necessary adjustments and repairs.
The smooth and reliable operation of the chopstick arms is critical not only for the stacking operations, but also for the booster catch attempt planned for Flight 8. Any malfunction in this system could have serious implications for SpaceX's goal of recovering the booster. SpaceX teams acted swiftly and efficiently, tackling the unexpected clamp failure and chopstick system malfunction with precision. With a problem solved, the ship was successfully restacked onto the booster, this time without complications. If all goes well, there should be no further need for destacking before launch. As of now, the launch remains scheduled for March 6, barring any further delays. Hopefully, SpaceX can proceed as planned without additional setbacks. For a detailed breakdown of Flight 8's mission objectives, key tests, and upgrades following the Flight 7 anomaly, check out my previous video. Link is in the description. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. Firefly Aerospace's Blue Ghost lander successfully achieved a soft landing on the moon on March 2, marking the first fully successful commercial lunar landing in history. The Blue Ghost mission began with a successful launch on January 15, aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. After separating from a launch vehicle, Blue Ghost remained in Earth orbit for 25 days, conducting system health checks and engine calibrations before executing the translunar injection burn and initiating a Ford A journey to the moon. Blue Ghost entered lunar orbit on February 13 and spent the next 16 days performing a series of critical operations such as conducting health checks and calibrating its propulsion system, science payloads, cameras, and other subsystems to prepare for landing. On March 2, the lander initiated its descent to the lunar surface involving carefully orchestrated maneuvers that ascent orbit insertion burn at an altitude of 100 kilometers above the lunar surface using the main engine, placed the spacecraft on a controlled descent trajectory. Following a 30-minute coast phase, the lander initiated a 9-minute braking burn to reduce velocity and transition from a horizontal to a vertical orientation. Once positioned above the target site, the main engine shut down and the reaction control system thrusters managed the terminal guidance phase, ensuring a controlled descent. In the final moments, Blue Ghost descended at a constant velocity of 1 meter per second, before executing a precise touchdown on Mercrisium, a basaltic plane in the northeastern quadrant of the moon's near side. This made Firefly the first commercial company in history to achieve a fully successful lunar landing. Intuitive Machines landed its Nova Sea disuse lander on the moon in February 2024, but it suffered a hard landing and tipped over, limiting its operational capabilities, though it was still able to transmit data for a week. The Blue Ghost lander, standing 2 meters tall and 3.5 meter wide, is developed by Firefly Aerospace under NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative, which aims to send small robotic landers and rovers to the moon to support lunar exploration and resource utilization. Equipped with 10 NASA payloads, the lander will study the moon's interior and surface interactions. Among its key instruments is a subsurface drilling system capable of reaching depths of 2 to 3 meters beneath the lunar surface to measure heat flow, providing insights into the moon's thermal properties. It will also test an innovative lunar sample retrieval technology that utilizes gas jets instead of robotic arms, offering a potential alternative for future sample collection missions. The Electrodynamic Dust Shield is another critical payload, employing electric fields to remove dust accumulation from surfaces. This technology has far-reaching applications, including self-cleaning thermal radiators and glass surfaces, addressing the challenges posed by dust buildup during lunar and Martian missions. Additionally, the Lunar Magnetotelluric Sounder will measure electric and magnetic fields on the Moon to characterize its interior structure and composition, shedding light on its geophysical properties. These investigations, alongside other onboard studies, aim to enhance our understanding of lunar geology and resources, contributing valuable data to support human exploration under NASA's Artemis program. The lunar operational phase of Blue Ghost is expected to last for about 14 Earth days. Firefly Aerospace plans to build on this mission with future flights under CLIPS, such as Blue Ghost Mission 2 in 2026 and Mission 3 in 2028, ensuring sustained progress toward establishing a robust lunar presence. Launched on the same rocket alongside Blue Ghost was the Hakuto-R Resilience Lander, developed by the Japanese company iSpace. The lander is currently on its way to the moon, following a low-energy transfer trajectory designed to minimize fuel consumption. So far, its health status remains nominal and it is expected to attempt a lunar landing in early May. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, 
and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.